Hey guys, it is Robin the Lady Biker. How is everyone doing today? Hey, I wanted to come to y'all today and talk about, because where I am riding today, I'm on California Highway 246, about to turn on to 154 and head back into Santa Barbara. And inland here has been hot, super, super hot. And so I thought it'd be a great time to talk about the, my top three tips for preventing fatigue and staying cool when you're riding when it's hot. Hang on for the ride. Hey guys, okay. So, started this video about a week ago, and we were out for a ride, my husband and I, and it was so hot. Oh my gosh, guys, it was so crazy hot, the cameras kept shutting down. So, I lost a lot of footage and figured it was just better to start over. And today is the first day in a week that I could ride inland away from the coast, away from the Pacific, and it not be in triple digits. So I thought, yeah, this would be a good day to get out and ride and talk about the top three tips for staying, for preventing fatigue, because that's one of the worst things that can happen for us. I know in the last several trips that we've made, when we've been riding inland, and it's been getting really hot. I mean, goodness, I think down in the valley, like uh, the near Death Valley and all that, two days ago, they hit a record of 130. The last time it was that hot was in 1913. It's been hot here in California. And um, so getting out and riding and being able to enjoy the beauty that is here in California for the ride, you really need ways to stay cool. Now, part of this, I'm a share for a it's my experience not only from as a rider, but also I'm a personal trainer and have been in the fitness industry for almost 15 years. So some of this is gonna come down to just the physicality of riding as well. So tip number one, you have to stay hydrated. Critical, must, must, must stay hydrated. So how do you do that? Well. One, you can stop pretty regularly, which you need to anyway, and hydrate. But I have found that that's just not enough. I need to have liquids personally. Let me set my cruise here so that I don't get to scooting too fast going downhill. Anyway, so I personally have found that I need water between stops. So my husband and I dug out our old hydration packs from when we would do hiking. And that was great. The, the hydration, you get like two liters of water. You can ice it down. That helps keep your body temperature down, keeps, you, keeps liquid in you. It's a great option. But when we're riding in our textile jackets, having those hydration packs on as a backpack cut down on the airflow, which was counterproductive to staying cool when you're riding. So we came up with a couple of different options. And one was we figured out a way to strap the hydration pack behind us on our passenger seat. So that way the, the tube's within reach, so it's not attached to our body, but it's close enough that the tube, we can get our drink, whatever we need, it really hugely made a difference being able to stay hydrated because the effects of dehydration are you get dizzy, you get nauseous, uh, it slows down your cognitive function so your reaction rate whenever you see an issue decreases whenever you're dehydrated. So having those hydration packs, oh and then whenever we're traveling and we'll actually test this I think next weekend because we're heading up to do our PCH ride and the part of the ride where it is going to be hot, we're actually going to try and attach, either attach our hydration packs to the sissy bar bag, or we'll actually just open the zipper and slide it into the top of the sissy bar bag. I'm not sure which way we're going to go yet. You'll have to check back and see what we do. 
So, hydration, critical. That was tip number one. Tip number two, and this really goes whether you're going to be riding in extreme cold or extreme heat, but controlling your core temperature. So, so important. So, how do you do that? Well, whenever we are riding here, you know, in the heat, guys, we made a new investment. Check it out here. This is a cooling vest. Now, the ones we bought were, eh, I think, $38 roughly. The link for them, we got them at Amazon. The link's down in the description. I'm telling you, this thing is the coolest thing ever. So, if you're not familiar with it, um, the cooling vest works on evaporative cooling. So, you have to get it wet. Really, really wet. Oh, speaking of evaporative cooling, I'm starting to, I've got sweat rolling down my face here. Anyway, uh, back to topic. You get, you have to get it wet, and so you wear it as close, you want to have like on a t-shirt, and then you want to put the, uh, the cooling vest, once it's saturated, not dripping, but thoroughly sat soaked, you want to put it on, so you want to buy one that's going to fit fairly close to your body. And then you want to have a jacket over, over the top. So whether it be a textile, whether it be a mesh, just something that will prevent the water from evaporating too quickly. So evaporative cooling, let me show my geek here, is it's an energy transfer and in the evaporation process, whatever the water's touching, it's going to drop its temperature. Now the vests that we have that we, test, we tried them last weekend when we were riding in the valley, which was stupid hot, like 105-ish. I mean, it was hot. Um, it really made it feel like we were riding in about 80, 85 degree temps. It made it so much cooler. The claims of the vest is 10 to 15 degrees. My personal experience, I think it made it feel more like 20 degrees cooler than what it was, but that's just me. Oh, I need to look up and show y'all some of this. Anyway, so there's that. Um, it was it was wild how much of a difference it made having that. Oh, speak of people pulling out right in front of you. Let's see if he's going to get rolling quickly or not. Okay. Anyway, back to what I was saying. So. If you're riding in extreme cold, keeping your core temperature is warm is important. When you're running when it's hot, you need to keep your core temperature cooler because it helps with your cognitive function, it helps delay dehydration, it just helps. And when the blood gets overheated and it's circulating that, that overheated blood around your brain, not a good idea. So, there's that. So, tip number two. Oh, shoot. Okay, how are we going to do this? Sorry, guys. Give me a moment. We got debris and we got highway patrol. Okay. Um, so, tip number one. Let me restart my brain. Tip number one, stay hydrated. Tip number two is control your core temperature. Keep it cool when it's hot, keep it warm when it's cold. All right, tip number three. You need to stop regularly. You need to stop regularly, not only to get extra water to refill your hydration pack, you just need to walk around. Mainly because when we ride, we're in a We're in a seated position, which overstretches our glutes and then it encourages our hip flexors, the muscles in the front of our hip, that help lift our leg to shorten. The bad thing that happens is when that hip flexor shortens, it's what pulls on your low back because it pulls your pelvis forward, it arches your low back, most of our low back pain comes from the fact that our hip flexors are too tight. 
most. There are some example or there are some exceptions, but most of the time, oh, look at that, guys. Most of the time, the reason that you're going to have lower back pain when you're riding is because your hip flexor is too tight. And it in the seated position, it encourages that tightening. So get up, get off the bike, walk around, stretch out a little bit, shake it out, loosen it up. Um, it's really, really going to help overall because if your low back starts to hurt, pain is going to increase the speed at which fatigue takes over. So that's it, guys. Those are my three tips. Hydration. Control your body, your core body temp. And get, up, get off the bike at least every, I would say, hour to 100 miles. Depending on your stamina, you really do need to stop and do that. So anyway, guys, those are my top three tips for preventing fatigue when, especially when riding when it's hot. So guys, are there any out there, for, especially for those of you who are experienced riders, do you have any other suggestions, any other tips that you would add to that list? Please, I would be, I would welcome any additional thoughts because fatigue can be you know, whenever we're out doing our 400, 500 mile days, especially in the heat, it's important to be able to, to not fatigue. So if you've got any ideas, share them. If you're a new rider, do you have any questions that either myself or someone in the community that can answer? So anyway, guys, that's it. I am here in, oh, I think we're going to be coming up on a pass. Uh, is it in two miles? It's in two miles traffic on this road is it's getting a little heavy today and this is one of the more dangerous roads but it is it's, it's beautiful so I am going to say farewell for today enjoy my ride I mean come on look at this you come around this corner and this is just one of our valleys and it is just it's beautiful I love riding out here so with that guys do what I'm doing get out and ride if you're in the heat, stay cool, <laughs> but have fun, be safe, and I'm going to catch you on the next video. Bye, guys.